We don't have a TMOD yet. Uh, Pooja, can you please send that background? Uh, the I've missed it. Sure, I'll do that right away. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Seven thirty, Shah. Okay, let's start the meeting. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, dignitaries, mm -hmm. and my dear friends. My name is uh, Sham Sundar. You are today's Sergeant at Arms. It's my duty to welcome you to a Club Toasted meeting today, wherein we have some certain ground rules to be followed. First of all, let me, after welcoming you, it's my duty to uh, set some ground rules for our meeting to proceed the meeting without any uh, disturbances or hindrances. Let me ask you, everyone, to please switch off your mobile phones, if possible, or mute the mobile phones. I hope uh, you will be doing it right away. And uh, in order to have the meeting uh, without any disturbance, please mute your uh, uh, mobile phones. Also, this is an online uh, meeting. So you know very well your uh, washrooms exit in case of any emergencies. So please do, if there's any emergencies, please follow the uh, emergency rules and do not panic. Most, first and foremost, Whoever, I'm sure everybody will be attending from uh, your respective residence. Please do not use lifts in case of any emergencies. And of course, the strong ladies and beautiful ladies do not wear your heels if there is any emergencies. It is best to have your videos on while we are presenting or during the meetings. But however, if you are fi finding any hindrances or any small uh, glitches, please switch off your videos, attend to that, and again, come back. Be mindful of your background as uh, there'll be a lot of uh, background noise or home hindrances, while, and uh, it might disturb the speakers or the role players. If it affects the overall quality, the host may request you to switch off the video, and please adhere to that. With all this, let me read the let me read out the Toastmasters Club's mission. Our club's Toasted's vision is we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Our club's toasted vision are we are global family of agile and passionate leaders. Now, it is time to introduce our dynamic president who has recently won the third place in table topic session in none other than DTAC 2024. Rest all is history for her. What has she has achieved is this is the greatest moment. And she believes this will take her to great places. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome one and only Pu DTM Pooja Saran. Thank you so much, our Sergeant at Arms today and then the president for the entire tenure. Now I can gladly take all my burden and give it to you, <laughs> including of all the praises that you're going to get. Thank you so much, everyone. And as Sham said, uh, something called as third place in table topic. I just have to say something that might change some perceptions. I was planning to fly to DTEC. I had my booking done. Everything was ready. My uh, tickets were done. My visa was done. 
my hotel bookings were done and due to some medical emergencies, I had to stay back. Now my daughter, my son and everyone was like, you should go, you should go. We will manage, we will manage, we'll manage. It's okay. Someone will take care of mama. Nanima will take care of Nanima. And my husband said, okay, I'll go there, we'll manage. But somehow I had to be there. And I was the only one who was the online contestant. Sham, if you can back me up. There were around 55 contestants overall from all the spaces and I was the only one. And that they arranged the entire meeting as hybrid meeting only because of me. Because it was till last moment, it was planned that I will be there. Only a week before I said I'll not be able to make it. And the District 116 was so humble, so kind and so supportive that they said, okay, you know what, we will do it hybrid and you can do it online. Last minute, I was like, I asked Roshan, Roshan, would you be able to take my place? Are you okay? She said, why don't you try online? Just ask. And they said, yes. And I didn't know that I will be, I couldn't hear anyone after. I was the first contestant because of online. They put me first and then rest of the people. I didn't hear any of the other contestants. And I just said, okay, I'm done with it. And when I got that third place, I had tears in my eyes. The reason, first, I was not in my hometown, as in I was not with my kids. I, they who were there, there to support me, I was there with my mom taking care of her. Second, because this is the spirit that we wanted to put in Toasted as a club. Online, virtual, or being 1,333 miles away didn't stop me from participating in this contest. Didn't stop me achieving that place. That's what I want to bring it here. That's what I think Deepthi, our founder, thought about it. And there was no dearth of opportunities that you can get. I know all the XCOM team must be proud. So many awards, and I know Christopher sir was telling me that the table was falling short. That was Deepthi's dream. There were so many awards for an online club. And people were generally asking, you know, toasted, toasted. And I got so many messages from, I've heard so much about your club. I've heard so much. No one ever said that I've heard so much about you. They said, I was, I've heard so much about your club, so much about your club. And that made my soul say, oh, this is done with. I think this is the place that we wanted Toastmasters to be in. 100th year of Toastmaster and so much I could achieve from 1,333 miles away. I think God had a plan. God didn't want me to go there because God wanted everyone, universe wanted everyone to get a point that, you know, you there is no dearth of opportunity and you can win even when you are far off because Toastmasters is going to support you. People are going to support you. And 100 year of Toastmasters, I think this is how the 100 year success has become successful because everyone was there to support you. Everyone is there to help you reach your goals if you have your goals clear. So with this understanding, today would be my last meeting as a president and I would hand it over to our founder to get into the election for the new XCOM. And with this, I opened the meeting number 64, which would be the last meeting as a president for me. So please allow me to invite our founder, distinguished Toastmasters, Deepthi Portnes, who took a dream, who decided on something that she's going to you know, open this club or start this club, which would be virtual, which would be global, and that will just break all the rules of limitations. And this club would fly. Distinguished Toastmasters Deepthi is not just a homemaker or just someone who is dreaming. Who's, she's someone who is flying to achieve that dream. She is into bark flower therapies. She is into now Akashic Records. She is just someone who wants to achieve everything that she can along with supporting our best mentor, the founder, Deepthi, distinguished Toastmaster Deepthi, the stage is all yours to take on. 
Thank you so much, President, Distinguished Toastmaster Pooja Saran. I want to emphasize this because this is the last meeting for you as a president. And I must say that was a fabulous, though it was a very challenging tenure for you, being away from the uh, uh, Qatar for so, so such a long distance and still you managed to be a leader of a group scattered all over the places. And I must say, it was a fantastic job. Please let us give her a virtual round of applause. She deserves it because I know what all she has gone through to achieve these awards. And li literally my dream came true when I saw that table is falling short for the awards. It was truly amazing. And unless uh, the leadership is capable, this is not possible. So with this, now today is the time. As a Toastmaster, we know that we have to keep the ball rolling. We believe in passing the baton. We know that if the ball is rolling or uh, if the water is flowing, it doesn't catch because it, it will go with today's theme. That's why I'm giving water's example. When water is stagnant, it catches moss, but when the water is flowing, it remains fresh. And that is what we truly believe in as Toastmasters. And every year we pass on the baton to the next, to groom themselves as uh, future leaders and the leaders like Christopher, who already have been there, done that, they're always there to guide. They show the light for every uh, uh, incoming leader and groom them. And that is the beauty of Toastmasters. Here we are not into any kind of politics, no judgments, nothing. We are just here to pass, in pass, uh, we believe in passing the baton. We start our journey and we definitely leave the uh, place with great achievements. And those achievements are internal and they pay us long-term in our life. I know Pooja when she joined Toastmasters, and she started her journey from BPPR, and now she is a uh, she is stepping down as a president, and this is quite a journey. She will experience. Uh, she will share her experience with you all. But before that, now it's time for us to welcome the new leadership, the fresh water. People are ready to get their hands-on experience on leadership, and people like Pooja will groom them very well so that our legacy is intact because this is not just any club we have been a record breaking club since its inception we got chartered in the a month of december and we bagged all the awards in area contest within three months and that is something that shows the strength of our club and the legacy has been so very well maintained with by all the leaders and that is the expectation from incoming leaders as well. So with this, I would like now uh, uh, like to request Pooja, please spotlight all the XCOM members, existing XCOM members, if possible. including yourself, please. You can spotlight Juliet as proxy for Roshu. We don't have Santosha today. So you can spotlight Sunny as a proxy to him because anyway, it's stepping down process. <laughs> Let at least be seven people on the screen. Yeah, you go. So we do not have our vice president of membership today and our vice president of uh, public relations because uh, they are traveling. And uh, this uh, is the XCOM where Juliet is representing our VPPR and uh, Toastmaster Sunny is representing our VP membership. All of you have done your job 
to the best of your abilities. And I'm so glad that you always put your best foot forward and achieved all the glory to the club. And let us all congratulate this XCOM for their achievement with a huge round of applause. One second, I'll take my gavel. <laughs> And with this, now I release all of you from your duties, respective to your office. You have done fabulous job. With this, I release you all from your existing role. Now it's time for us to get in the fresh water. Now, can you please uh, take a uh, screenshot, please, and then. Done. We have a lot of supportive members who've done the screenshot part. Yes. Now let us spotlight the incoming XCOM, whoever is present and whoever is proxying the other person. And we have the new XCOM here. You can also be here as immediate past president, though there will not be any installation for you. The same, the same people there again. Benson is not there. Benson, I he's not turned up till now. Uh, no, Benson is having some technical difficulties. He is uh, messaging actually. He's he's installing again, so he should be back any moment. Okay, uh, then... Meanwhile, I'll take proxy of Benson. Yeah, so you are the proxy of Benson. Perfect. Okay, so now it's time for us to conduct the elections. Now, the list that I, I have asked for the nominations as an immediate past president, I had floated the message in the group and I had asked for the nomination, whoever wanted to nominate themselves for any particular post. And I have received few nominations. Still, let me tell you, if anybody wants to nominate themselves on the floor, in any case, suppose they sent me an email, but I did not receive it. In any such case, please, you can nominate yourself on the floor. I will wait for the count of three. If nobody nominates during that process, I will uh, consider that other person is elect for the particular position. Okay. So now first we will have the uh, election for the post of secretary. I have received the nomination for the post of secretary by Toastmaster Mamata Gopinath. Anyone wants to uh, opt for secretary's position from the floor. Please raise your hands or send me the message. I will wait till the count of three. And then if nobody nominates during that particular time, I will consider Mamata as elect and I will announce her as a uh, secretary elect. But if anybody wants to nominate themselves, we will have election. Anyone for the post of secretary to the count of three? Three, two, one. I did not receive any nominations from the floor. So I declare Mamata Gopinath as secretary elect for the year 24-25. Congratulations, Mamata. I have received nominee. Next is Sergeant at Arms. The next nomination that I have received is from Toastmaster Benson for the post of Sergeant at Arms. Again, the floor is open. If anyone wants to nominate themselves, please raise your hands or send a message or just tell me now to the count of three, I will wait. Three. Two, one. I 
declare Toastmaster Benson as Sergeant at Arms elect. Congratulations, Benson. Next is our treasurer. For the post of treasurer, I have received a nomination from Toastmaster Rabi Chandra. The floor is open. If anybody wants to nominate to the count of three, please let me know your nomination. Three, two, one. I declare Toastmaster Ravi Chandra as treasurer elect. Next is our vice president of public relations. For this, I have received a nomination from Toastmaster Sunny Nakpal. To the count of three, I will wait for the floor nominations. Three, two, one. I declare Toastmaster Sunny Nakpal as Vice President of Public Relations. Next is uh, the post of Vice President of Membership. For that, I have received a nomination from Toastmaster Bina Srivastava. To the count of three, the flo uh, floor is open for the nominations. To the count of three, I will wait for your response. Three. Two, one. I declare Toastmaster Bina Srivastava as Vice President of Membership Elect. Next is our v Vice President of Education. For that, I have received a nomination from Toastmaster Roshan Sukheja. The floor is open to the count of three. Please declare your interest. Three, two, one. I declare Toastmaster Roshan Sukheja as Vice President of Education elect. Next is the post of President. For that, I have received a nomination from Sham Sundar, Toastmaster Sham Sundar. I, the floor is open for the nomination. Anyone wants to pitch in, please let me know to the count of three. Three, two, one. I declare Toastmaster Sham Sundar as president elect for the year 24 25. Congratulations to the newly elected XCOM and Pooja Saran, distinguished Toastmaster Pooja Saran, will be serving as immediate past president. She will be hand holding all the XCOM through the next year. Now I will request distinguished toastmaster christopher almeida to do the installation of the newly elected officers distinguished toastmaster christopher almeida is club toasters uh, when we chartered the club he was he is one of the uh, members founder uh, members of the club toasted and he is also a club mentor so with this I would request toast and he congratulations, Christopher, first of all, to you because you have bagged a big award this year. So congratulations to you. You have shown how uh, you are a true blood Toastmaster and how supportive you are. And you have been doing this all over the district. And that is what the support you are giving uh, unbiasedly to Club Toasted. So please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Christopher Almeida to do the installation of the newly elected officers. Over to you, Christopher. Thank you, Dixie, for your warm words. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, warm good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to Club Toasted Installation Ceremony. So we just completed the election where distinguished Toastmaster Dipti conducted the club election. Now, typically a club election is conducted when the quorum is met. And for the quorum to be met, you need to have 50% of the club membership attending the club meeting. So today we have around uh, 15 members uh, with guests included. So I think we meet that requirement. So that was a good part. Now, having said this, let's quickly jump into the installation ceremony. Would the outgoing officers, you know, please uh, raise your hands, the virtual hands with your reaction. 
I would like uh, you to show your faces. Okay. If you can put your virtual hands, it would be great. I think you are already displayed on the screen. That's good. At this time, you are discharged from all your duties and responsibilities. Thank you for your excellence in service to this club. Now I am here to install the officers of Club Toasted. So with this, I will briefly state the key responsibilities and remind all of you of the challenges that lie ahead. The collective challenges is to make this club one of the best club in Toastmasters International. This involves helping the members achieve their goals as well as leading the club to president distinguished club status this coming year. Now each officer is obligated to attend the monthly club executive committee meeting, attend club officer training, which is held twice a year, prepare a successor for his or her respective office. I will now describe the challenges and the key responsibilities for each officer beginning with the sergeant at arm. We don't have the gavel, so probably if you are the officer, please make sure that you raise your hand. Now, our sergeant at arm is Benison Shi. Yeah, you're there. Now, we don't have a physical meeting, so during the virtual meeting, make sure you set up the Zoom link, circulate to all the members, ensure that you take care of the security setups on Zoom, kickstart the meeting reciting the ground rules, Toastmasters International Mission, and introduce the club president. Sajid Ram Venison, will you perform these duties to the best of your abilities? You may respond as I will. Yes, I will do. Thank you. Let's give him a big round of applause. Now, typically in a physical meeting, the gavel is passed to the next officer. But today, we, this is a virtual meeting. I'll call upon our treasurer, Ravi Chandra. Ravi Chandra, please raise your hand. As a treasurer, you will keep financial records and prepare the club budget. Announce when it's time for the members to pay their dues. You can put yourself on mute at the moment, uh, Rabi. Okay, thank you. Explain the dues structure to the members. Collect dues. Work with the secretary to ensure that the club submits dues promptly on time to Toastmasters International World Headquarters. Rabi Chandra. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Thank you. Let's give him a big round of applause. A third club officer, Mamta Gopinath. As a secretary, you will maintain an accurate membership roster and attendance. Submit the new club officers list to Toastmasters International by 30th June. Work with the treasurer to ensure that the new members' applications and dues get to Toastmasters International World Health Headquarters as soon as possible. You will also work with the treasurer to submit your club's renewal dues to Toastmasters International on time. Provide the club with minutes of each meeting. You also have and access as the base camp manager. Mamta, will you perform these duties to the best of your abilities? Yes, I will. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you, Mamta. Our next club officer is the VP PR, Sunny Nagpal. Will you perform these duties to the best of your abilities? Your responsibilities are to lead the club membership building, sorry. Your responsibility is to motivate people to visit your club, motivate the current members to invite guests, make sure that you talk about a variety of means to promote the club in the community or organization. Enlist your fellow club members and PR activities, providing them with promotional materials and ideas for inviting guests. 
recognize reg the members achievement with methods such as announcement newsletter emails and articles that you submit for the newsletter sunny will you perform these duties to the best of your ability i will thank you sunny let's give him a big round of applause the next role player is the vp membership and do we have bina ya we don't have bina but we have azad as a proxy, proxy. for bina yeah, i am proxying okay. for bina thank you so the role of a vp membership is to lead the club membership building efforts to achieve the membership goal of eight new members promptly give new members applications and duty dues to secretary and treasurer personally greet guests and provide them with guest pass including the membership application make sure each guest hears about the benefits of toastmasters and gets a personal invitation to become a member and lastly represent your club at the area council meeting as a proxy for bina azad would you perform the responsibility as vp uh, yes, i will thank you let's yes, give him a big round of applause we'll move on to the next is the role of vp education and today we have proxy for vp education that's juliet juliet i'm going to read out the role of vp education the role of vp education is to gain commitment from members to set educational goals for themselves assure that the club members are aware of schedule of meeting roles plan meetings with the help of the members in assisting to achieve their goals work with club members to make or keep this meeting fun and well run work with your members to ensure that they submit their application for educational awards promptly provide for educational topics at club meetings such as those from the successful club series better speaker series leadership excellence series represent your club at the area division and the district council meeting you are the second highest ranking officer in the club you would preside over the meeting when the president is absent juliet will you perform these duties to the best of your abilities on behalf of roshan yes i will thank you juliet let's give her a big round of applause and the final role club officer the ceo of the club the buck stops at this person the club president the club president sham sundar you are the chief executive officer thus you will preside at all club meetings and all meetings of the club executive committee it's your challenge to see that this club adds new members and meets the needs of the current members to achieve their communication and leadership goals you represent your club at area division and the division district council meeting you establish a club climate that is supportive stimulating and rewarding to its members you realize that among the resources available to you the fellow club members the club officers team the club officers handbook area director division director and the district 116 website all other district officers you hold the gavel as a symbol of the power and authority that your club has given to you during your term of office use it wisely with restraint you are a member as well as a leader of your team a team is more than a collection of people it's an emotional force rooted in the feelings thoughts and actions of all members with common goal of achievement sharing and mutual support work with your team members to create a healthy dynamic club a club which everyone is proud will you as president accept this challenge and perform your duties to the best of your at your best of your ability yes i will perform my up to my best of my ability and i will uh, take up the challenge 
let's all give him a big round of applause it is now my pleasure to declare these toastmasters installed into the office to which they have been elected will all the members please raise your hands now all the club toasted members the growth and development of the toastmasters program in club toasted depends largely upon the action of this group on your honor as men and women of toastmasters do you pledge to individually and collectively stand by this club live with it and work with it throughout the coming year yes we thank will thank you thank you you can lower your hands now generally the installation officer of the installation of the club officer is done by the era director it's my sincere sincere pleasure to declare these toastmasters officers installed in their respective club offices it was a pleasure to conduct this wonderful installation ceremony it is a great honor with this i would like to hand over control to the toastmaster of the day or should i hand it over to let me see the agenda it is to yeah the toastmaster of the day oh, sorry i will hand over it to back to pooja thank you so over to you. much thank you so much distinguished toastmasters christopher i am so glad that we have a new team ready trust me each and every award on the table was dedicated because of this team had come because of this team the team that is going to be new i'm sure you need two tables so all the best thank you so much sham for supporting me all this while and i know everyone is going to support this team as excom team is not just one name of it it is just someone who is going to represent it, represent our faces to them thank you so much christopher sir again for being here and being a lucky charm for this <laughs> our area director joined in she was there she could see half of it but she had some influence um, internet issues so she had to log off so with this let us start with the meeting today and today's meeting is going our host for this meeting is our newest member a newest member is benson now benson just just doesn't need introduction is something that i will not say because he's a newest member i think we all should know what he does he has been a toastmasters already he has done a lot of his work in toastmasters he joined our club with this thought that this club is going to help him achieve more that he could do in a regular club and i am so honored to have him in our club i remember the first day when he came with through albanush that's his home club when he started uh, his journey and now he is the part of club toasted please put your hands together for our newest member who is taking up this challenge of being the toastmasters of the day Benson Shai who is also our Sajid Adams now over to you Benson the stage is all yours thank you so much toast master pooja for such a wonderful introduction there is no greater agon than bearing and told story inside you that is maya angelas quote good evening fellow toastmasters and dear guest our theme is how to acquire wealth and today i want to take you a little back in time and see if there is something we can take because the historical scent of babylon came for us as the richest city its treasures of gold and jewels were fabulous one natural picture such as we of the city that was located in a suitable setting of tropical luxury surrounded by rich natural resources of forest 
and minds. But such was not the case because it was located beside the Euphrates River in a flood, a right valley. It had no forest, no mines, not even stone for building. It was not even located upon a natural trade route. The rainfall was insufficient to raise a crop. All of the resources that were supporting a large city like that were a human developed, and all of its riches were the result of the wisdom of its people. The question stand out right. How then did Babylon become so weird and most powerful city of that time? It's because they first have to learn how to acquire wealth with these seven principles, which I'm going to share it with you today. In that distant past, they had no school or college. Nevertheless, they had a center of learning and very practical one it was, where almost every evening, a large group of people, mostly middle age, used to gather, as we have gathered here in Toastmaster today, discuss and argue some of interesting subject. And in that tempo of learning, that's where the wisdom of the past was expounded by a volunteer teacher, like our Toastmaster of the day is doing today. <clears throat> Babylon is like an outstanding example of anyone's ability to achieve a great objective using whatever means are at his disposal. Suppose we listen and see whether they knew how to acquire wealth. For the benefit of the guests, our today's meeting is divided into three sessions. The first one is for KEO. That's where we receive an education model. The second one is for the prepared speech. Those, these are a speech that are prepared based on the project. And the last one is for general evaluator. In general evaluator, that's where we get a feedback on the areas that we can improve. On the other hand, we have a team that will help us to conduct this meeting in successful way. And our first role player today is the timer. Our timer today is DTM Christopher. DTM Christopher, he is a computer science gra graduate from Mumbai University, India, and DHR Express Qatar IT director for over 18 years was born in Mumbai, India, and raised in Qatar. DTM Christopher, could you please introduce your role? Toastmasters Day, fellow Toastmasters guests, warm good evening once again. Time management is life management. Today, I'm playing the role of timer. As a role of a timer, I keep time of all the speakers to ensure that they are meeting the timing guidelines. And I will also make sure that I keep track of the meeting schedule if we are on time or off time. Now, today with this, I will have the virtual background displayed during this segment. I will show green when the speaker hits the qualifying time. I will show yellow or amber, as they say, when the speaker hits the target time. And I will show the red background when the speaker hits the end of their allocated time. So today we have the QO session, which is 
16 will have green, 17 will have amber, 18 minutes will have red. We have the evaluation, seg the prepared speech segment, which will have five minutes green, six minutes amber, and seven minutes red. We have the evaluation evaluators, two minutes green, two and a half amber, and three minutes red. The speakers will be granted a grace period of 30 seconds on either side of the speech. I will present my report at the end when the general evaluator calls out for the report. I wish you all the very best. Time management is life management. Over to the Toastmasters today. Thank you, Toastmaster Christopher. For sure, time management is life management. Now, moving on to our second role prayer is DTM Puja. DTM Puja. She will take grammarian role and aha counter as well. DTM Puja. She is a passionate Toastmaster who believes that the quality of your life depends on the quality of your communication, of your communication with yourself first. DTM Puja, could you please? Thank you so much, Toastmasters of the day. Thank you. I love the way you call my name, Puja. So here is Puja for giving you the role of the grammarian. Now, grammar, I've heard a beautiful quote that grammar is like a rhythm to, the, to your favorite song. And if there is no rhythm to your favorite song, you know how icky and how itchy it feels when someone is singing your favorite song without any tone or without any lyrics to it or without any fun to it. You feel, oh, please don't talk. Rather, don't sing that song. It's my favorite song. So grammar is that. And today, my duty as a grammarian is going to take care of or in fact, note a little bit of ifs, buts, and something that you're not correct as per the grammar. So I'm going to put a note and I will put my teacher's glasses on and make sure that you're following the grammar rules. I'm also going to take care of something new that I've learned from you, exclusive things, some new codes that can be used and also as a grammarian, it's my duty to introduce a new word, as all teachers do. So the word of the day is very simple. It's called as Adam's Ale. Put your hands up if you know what Adam's Ale is. Unmute yourself and tell me what's Adam's Ale. <laughs> Adam's Ale is the other word for water. And that's that's the only word of the day because we know we have our KEO who's going to talk about water and wealth is also kind of water comes and goes and makes you feel good about yourself fresh. The word of the day is Adam's Ale and Adam's Ale means water and I would encourage all the speakers and all the people who are coming and speaking in this virtual platform to use that word of the day. I'm also going to be your R counter. Now, R counter is as simple as you driving a good vehicle on the car. Anyone who's rode in Rolls Royce or Mercedes, you know how smooth that Mercedes rides without any fillers, without any ditches. Even if they are, there are no shockers. There's some such nice shockers that you don't feel that. So all your grammar and your speech should be as smooth as driving a Mercedes. No filler words, no ah, uh, mm, and so now you know what ah. Uh, I'm going to keep a note on that and make sure that you ride a Mercedes ride after this meeting. So oh, I will give my report to our general evaluator, distinguished Toastmaster Deep Deportness, when asked about it. Over to you, our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much. Let us give a round of applause to our both DTM. <laughs> Now, before I would like to mention just the first philosophy of how to acquire wealth. That is to start thy path to fattening. This means to keep 10% of our earning. Because we do wake up, go to work, 
and make our earning, whether it's large or small. In that way, Babylon, they believe that we have every advantage and opportunity to succeed and build our wealth. And that is by utilizing it and keeping a little portion of our earning. It's very simple. And our basket will start to fattening at once and its increasing weight will start to feel good in our hands. That then is the first philosophy to keep a little portion of our earning. For the benefit of the time, we'll move on direct to our KEO. Our KEO is Toastmaster Ajit. Toastmaster Ajit. He is a founder and a leader of Natural Solution. A major world and recognized MSc, PhD, and a special cause of water and waste treatment conducted by Cranfield University School of Water and Science in UK. Toastmaster Ajit, let us put our hand together to welcome our Toastmaster Ajit. The screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Benson. Thanks to all the Toastmasters, all old and new office bearers for giving me this chance to be part of this Toasted event. I'm sure I'm audible. Good, thank you very much. Now, I would like to share my presentation about Adam's Ale. Adam's Ale, is the elixir of life. And this elixir should be counted at all times. The question is, I suppose my presentation is visible. Thank you. It's for today's Adam sale. Every drop should count. Question is, does it? Really, is it counted? And do we count it of what? It should be counted, certainly, but unfortunately, it does not get. This is a news item of 12th June 2020. 12th June is the time when the monsoon starts in parts of Nasik, which is part of India in state of Maharashtra. This was the first rainfall event and the river Godavari actually flooded. This was followed by this news a few months later. Nashik district is grappled with looming water crisis. There was flood. Immediately after a few months, there was drought. And there were floods in other places. Jaipur, Nagpur, Mumbai, Toronto. Everywhere you had events of floods followed by events of droughts. Now the question is, if there are floods, why are there droughts? There is a cycle of flood and droughts going together. Now, 
the question is why is that why do we have floods and droughts who is the culprit is it global warming people like to blame global warming for everything that happens these days it is a scapegoat global warming it rains you say global there is drought you say global there is much more to all these events other than global and i'll try and bring those things forward to see this people use pesticides people use weedicides people use fungicides people use insecticides everything on soil for protection of crops the result is the soil organisms either die due to that poisoning or they go hungry because there is no food for them and when these soil organisms die the plants wilt and then if it rains there are no perforations for rain water to infiltrate into the soil for the rain water to go into the soil such soil is actually an unconscious soil she is not living soil she is thirsty yes but because she is unconscious she cannot drink the water because she is intoxicated by so much of agrochemicals which we have put and this is happening world over the result is all these beneficial organisms in the soil they disappear and then they cannot conduct water through the underground passages because this passage is blocked whenever it rains it floods flood water goes away then there is absolutely drought so every life form counts right from a tiny ant to an elephant to a blue whale every life form counts and all of these together help in keeping the cyclicity of nutrients and energy intact unfortunately we are breaking this cycle this world is going on for millions of years because of cyclicity and this cyclicity is of nutrients from tiny microorganisms from tiny plants to all the animals which eat them to all the animals which eat those animals to all the animals which eat those animals and to all the microorganisms which degrade the waste and the dead bodies of all these organisms this is cyclicity of nutrients there is nitrogen cycle there is phosphorus cycle there is calcium cycle there is magnesium cycle there is carbon cycle there is cyclicity of all the nutrients on the surface of this earth and even under the ocean now see what happens when there are mega cities they get food and nutrition from all over the place consume it in those cities and then they throw that waste water away from the cities this is mumbai and mumbai collects food from everywhere eats it consumes it breaks it down and throws it into the sea whether treated or untreated is immaterial even the treated sewage has those nutrients which go out into the sea same thing happens in chennai and it is not just mumbai and chennai have a look at this these are the map of all the big cities in 2100 all the big cities will be there today they are in this place 2025 they are here 2050 they are here 2075 see the accumulation of population on the sea coast 
what will happen to all the nutrients which will be consumed by these people from these cities. They'll go out and then the cyclicity of nutrients will be broken. When the cyclicity of nutrients is broken, whether there is global warming or no global warming, there will be dearth of food. And dearth of food leads to many different issues. This is not economics. Your economy may be in several thousand trillions. But if there is no food, mind you, if there is no food, there is no future. So why should these cities grow like this? And that too, on the coast. That's a question. Who decides it? That's another question. Should we continue doing this? That's a question. Every drop of sewage also should come. And sewage should not go to sea, whether treated or untreated. Place of sewage is on the land. Modern human beings are only land-dwelling animals who defecate in water. All other land-dwelling animals, including elephants, buffaloes, and hippopotamus, who are large, water-loving animals. They live in water, practically, but they come out and defecate on ground. So we need to learn this from them. Every drop of sewage should come. Question is, whether does it? There is news of cancers increasing all around the world. You know why? These are the numbers of various kinds of cancers. Why? And that why can be understood if we understand something that is called as another path of Adam's Eve. We take Adam's Eve, we consume it, we use it, we make it bad and we throw it out. Like sewage is thrown out, this is the copper mine tailing pot. What you are seeing is several hundred acres, several hundred hectares of extremely poisonous water. That extremely poisonous water is found in each and every metallurgical industry where we get one or the other kind of metal or non-metal for human use. See this? And invariably it turns blue. I don't understand why. Whether it is copper, whether it is nickel, whether it is lead, whether it is iron, whether it is zinc, it turns blue and it reminds me of a fable that I have heard of Nilakanja. Shiva, the mythical being or historical being, whosoever, held the poison in his throat all these tailing ponds are doing that same thing for us. Unfortunately, they are not as efficient as she. This is the world map of arsenic. Arsenic found in ground. And where you see white part, it indicates no data. It does not mean there is no arsenic. And if you juxtapose this arsenic map with Telling spawn map, you will notice wherever there are more telling ponds, there is more arsenic. Wherever there is more arsenic, there is more cancer. And this, my dear friends, is a big problem. United States boasts of having maximum big economy. With that big economy is big arsenic. With that big arsenic is big cancer. This is something which is extremely wrong and bad. We need to pay attention to it and we need to work on it. If you Google about telling ponds, Google tells you once a telling pond leaks, it has a major negative impact on the economy, surrounding properties and people's lives. See the sequence. 
economy, surrounding properties, and people's lives. On average, three of world's 3,500 telling dam fail every year. The likelihood of telling dam failure is several times higher than the conventional water retaining dams. The contaminated tailings pond attract and kill migrating birds. They emit methane and other greenhouse gases. Disp now see, they emit methane and other greenhouse gases, but they keep mum on what goes into the ground. When they overflow the tailings pond, they throw all their waste into waterways and into the ground. Despite of years of public promises from officials, that the tailing spawns would shrink and go, they are growing. Their number has doubled in past 20 years. Advances in mining technology have made it possible to exploit lower grade deposits despite decreasing commodity prices, which means disposing of more rejects and putting more pressure on tailings facilities. My dear friends, this is what we do to Adam's aid. Every drop of industrial effluent also should count. And where we fail in counting that, we are creating problem for our own selves, for our own children and grandchildren. Is that fair, my dear friends? Now here, this is Dr. Gus Peth. He's ex-chairman of Council on Environmental Quality. He says, I used to think that climate change can be addressed by understanding biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse, and climate change. I thought that 30 years of good science could address these problems. I was wrong. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. Selfishness of those who want profits only for themselves, irrespective of what detrimental effects those profits cause on air, water and soil. Greed of those who want to increase their wealth, irrespective of what that wealth is causing to the surroundings and apathy of those who know that such things happen and yet do not care about it. And to deal with these, Gus Pet says, we need a cultural and spiritual transformation. Science and technology cannot give solution to this. And Gus Pet says, we scientists do not know how to do it. The real problems, my dear friends, should be counting drops of good water, bad water, worse water. Where it goes, what it does, to whom. And that should be done by all Toastmasters and distinguished Toastmasters because you are the leaders. And you should, and we should, understand what is happening to the beautiful Adam's Ale. My dear friends, Adam's Ale is not just water. No, it is pure water. How pure? It should be low in salts. It should be low in nitrates. It should be low in heavy metals. It should be low in all kinds of toxins. In that case, there is this question again. Was there ever a place, a system, a community which actually accounted for each drop? Yes, my dear friends, there was once a community which accounted for each drop of good water which prevented bad water from forming. Let me take you to a place 
called Varanas. This was and is the largest living city, the longest living city. In history, in mythology, it is mentioned as city. When Gautam Buddha came there, it was a city. Before that, when Yudhishthir came there, it was a city. When Ram crossed it, it was a city. And in this city, you can see this map of 2002. On the east is a river called Ganga, mighty river in India, holy river in India. That arrowhead indicates water supply department. In the north is a flow called Varuna. And those tiny blue dots are ponds and lakes. In 2002, there was not enough good and clean water available to every citizen in Varans. Before this, in 1931, when the water supply department was born, there was Ganga, there was Varuna, there were few more of these blue dots. And these blue dots, my dear friends, are ponds and lakes. In 1931, there were so many. That is the time when the water supply department was born. What was there before that? Before that, there was no water supply department. Before that, there were more than two living streams in Varanasi. In the north was river Varuna, in the south was river Assi. Now you start saying Varuna Assi, Varuna Assi, Varuna Assi. That is how that city got her name. It's Varanasi, not just randomly. It's Varanasi because it is situated between Varuna and Assi. And there were more than 70 ponds and lakes. My dear friends, made and managed by our ancestors who knew how to keep Adam's ale pure. In a city, how to have water for every community. In 1822, the British rule came to India and that resulted in change in revenue pattern. Earlier, the revenue was collected in form of grains, in form of goods. It was difficult to transport them. The Britishers did it. They started collecting it in cash because they wanted to transport it 6,000 miles away from this land. My dear friends, unfortunately, we continued on that path till 2002 and even later. And then the result, we no more remained a place, a system, a community which accounted for each drop. But thankfully, I could see these maps and I was thrilled by seeing them. Because in 1990, I had heard in Banaras Hindu University, their Kulagi, their anthem, which said, Suramya Dharai Varuna Assi Nahai Jiname Kabira Tulas. This translates into those beautiful streams called Varuna and Assi in which bathe two seers, Kabir and Tulsi Das. My dear friends, this anthem was written by a scientist, Shantiswaru Bhatnagar. He wrote this as a poem to his universities as a Kulagit, an anthem to his university. Unfortunately, the spirit of that poem was lost. In 1990, I asked those people around, where are these Suramya Dharai, these beautiful streams, Varuna and Assi? They told me Varuna has become a gutter and Assi is no more. Assi is not a river at all. They had forgotten that river Assi in 109 years of British occupation. Now, what do we want? Do we want a desertification that comes out of not taking care of Adam's Hill, not taking care of the beautiful, clean, 
water that is, we get absolutely free of charge. Has anyone paid any bills for the rains falling on you? I'm sure nobody has. I'm sure nobody has. We get the sunlight, the rainfall, nice, beautiful, fertile top soil, absolutely free of cost. Because they are most important for all living beings. Unfortunately, because of selfishness, greed, and apathy, we convert this garden of Eden, this stream of elixir, into a polluted, poisonous place. Do we want this, what we see in 1822, or do we want this that we see in 2002? My dear friends, this image is actually the path to desertification. And this image is path to paradise. I wish, I wish we should regain the paradise that we have lost. We should regain the elixir that we have lost. I wish all of you clean air, clean water, clean, wholesome food, happy, peaceful mind, and joyful, helping soul. Because every drop matters. My dear friends, I rest my presentation now. I'll be happy to take up any queries, any questions, any suggestions that you may have. Thank you very much. I hope I have kept to my time. I'm sure Timer will give us a report after we are done. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajiv. It was eye-opening. Varan, Varunasi, that was really eye-opening for me. I'm sure people have questions here. Please put your hands up if you have any questions. Uh, I have one question, if I can take liberty of asking that. I want to know if there is any form of a community where we as Toastmasters can help or contribute in a way of giving more knowledge to people or spreading these words, which are really not very, of course, scientifically given to people. So is there any foundation that you run that we all can be part of or contribute in our ways uh, to take this forward, good work that you're doing? Certainly. Uh, myself and a few friends of mine have started something that we have named Nirmal Narmada. Narmada is a river in India. It is the only river where people circumambulate. Otherwise, people circumambulate shrines, temples, synagogues, Mosque, Kaaba. But that circumambulation is of a tiny place as compared to entire river, which is a total walk of 3,500 kilometers. People actually do it in India. Thousands of people do it every year. And the beauty is when they are walking 3,500 kilometers, they get food every day from strangers, they don't have to buy food. They get shelter every day from strangers. They don't have to pay for it. That tradition is something which is so beautiful. It is that helping soul. It is that peaceful mind. It is that wholesome food, that clean water, that clean air. And we try and help people in that region for helping others. We have set up very recently a very good rainwater harvesting project in a village called Gauriyatsa Bodla, where 
they had to trek actually four kilometers for getting their drinking water. Now they get their drinking water within their village. Thanks to another organization called Niraja Foundation, who helped us in making this possible. There are several such villages, there are several such places where we can adopt the technologies which we have learned in last 30 years in making good Adam's Ale head. We also help people in treating wastewater so that every drop of sewage can be covered. And we help people in generating awareness against the tailing spawns, which are industrial effluents. And we also help people in removing selfishness, removing greed, and removing the Thank you. Thank you so much. I think the last one definitely as Toastmasters we can do. And we would love to join in hands and help you more in the good work that you're doing. I believe Christopher Sir also has a question. He is a big fan of uh, Adam's Ale in his garden. Christopher Sir, over to you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Ajit. It was a marvelous session. Really, you know, you've enlightened us so much. I especially leave this meeting with so much of knowledge on, uh, you know, the thoughts and uh, the wonderful work that you've been doing on this. Uh, thanks uh, for enlightening us on this, Adam Zayn. Now, the question that I have, you mentioned about a lovely poetry or poem that uh, was there. If you could share those resources on the chat, I would really appreciate that, you know, uh, that would be really of uh, big help. Certainly. What I'll do is, uh, after this uh, screen sharing is stopped, I'll... Uh share a link with you on okay. in the chat box by clicking that you will be able to see the the beautiful anthem of banaras hindu university it goes as madhura manohara ati vasundara ya sarva vidya ki rajata this is not just engineering this is not just economics sarva vidya ki rajata that is what banaras is and wants and i'll share that wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll stop sharing now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sham, you have a question, I believe. Go ahead. And then we see Benson should take it forward. Uh, Dr. Ajit, thank you very much for this insight. And I have a small question for you now. Okay. This is something which you have told us in terms of as a community or as a, as a group of people where we can do uh, you you are serving, I mean, or your, your projects are creating ponds. Uh, now, is there anything that you can suggest for the individual houses? How do they treat the sewage? Of course, one is rainwater harvesting is already there. But is there anything else that uh, the individuals can do for themselves? You can see this here. They have not seen any soap or shampoo for last 18 years. The skin has not seen any soap or shampoo for last 18 years. My dear friends, go back three generations or four generations for those who are young. People were not using soap or shampoo. It was not needed for them. They are absolutely useless products. Beauty comes from health, not from soap and shampoo. First thing that one can do. Second thing, it is not necessary to use clothes which are washed using very dirty poisonous detergents. It is not necessary to use iron clothes. Simple things which our three generations before grandparents were doing. If we start doing them again, Adam's ale will become ailmentless. Today, Adam's ale is ailing. It is ailing because of our foolishness. Give away foolishness, the knowledge will spring up. Of course, there are more things which you could do. We have recently actually remodeled a Swedish technology. It is called Jalaraksha. You flush the toilet 
and within a minute, the fecal matter is separated and water itself. Separated fecal matter is quite easy to treat. Separated water is quite easy to treat. I will share a video of that with uh, Ms. Pooja and she can share it with all of you. We also set up something that we call as reed bed systems. These are the gardens which treat wastewater. So if you are generating sewage, it's all right. Treat them in nature-friendly way. Our sewage treatment plants actually grow flowers, they grow fruits, they grow wood. And I'm very happy to tell you, one of our plants is generating 20 kilograms of honey, treating 2 lakh liters of sewage every day. There are so many flowers and such beautiful garden. I'll share that video as well. That there are so many bees which grow there. People get 20 kilograms of honey from our sewage treatments. So it's possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. I believe we've got so much of enlightenment and no shampoos for any one of us now. <laughs> Christopher, sir, uh, I know Azad is also laughing and Sunny already doesn't need shampoo. And Benson, our Toastmasters of the day. I'm sure you are not using shampoo for sure. Over to you. Will that, uh, will that uh, bring in uh, hair losses down by not using shampoo? <laughs> it's quite possible. In fact, my skin improved after I left using soap. Any bald had, person, bald person using the natural stuff for you? Try, Can try he grow that. hair? It's possible. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thanks a million. Benson, over to you. We should jump to prepare speech session. Okay. Thank you so much. Toastmaster Anjit for that are wonderful. I believe that you are the one one of the people that I know who did really work hard to make to make sure that we leave this world a better place for our future generation. With that, we'll move on direct to our prepared speech. And our first speaker today is Toastmaster. Shani, Toastmaster Shani, he loves children and children love him. He is a genetic brain design enthusiast, helping parent, decode ikigai and inborn talent of their children. He is an enriched with two decades of experience with Chin Maya vision program and dear Kiran Berdi, area leadership model. He is busy interviewing, making video, and volunteering when he is not working. His speech will be evaluated by Toastmaster Mamda. Toastmaster Mamda, would you read for us the objective of this speech? Sure. The purpose of this project is for the member to learn about different types of negotiation and the strategies that can be used when negotiating. The purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspect of the past or future negotiation in his or her life. The speech title is, Are You Desperate or Driven? The hidden skill of negotiation. Over to you, Toastmaster. Sir. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Mamba. Toastmaster Sani, speech title Smile or the best. Smile or the best. Toastmaster Sani, the screen is yours. Sean F. Kennedy said, don't fear to negotiate. And don't negotiate out of fear. You know why? 
66 percent of the employees have got much higher salaries when they negotiate. By the way, how many of you want to be happier? Quick raise of hands. How many of you are married? <laughs> how many of you thought of going to Himalayas? Great. So now you are in the right place and I'm in the right place talking the right topic. Negotiations. You want to be happier, you are married and you have thought of going to Himalayas. So disclaimer, don't try this with your spouse. When we negotiate, what are the possible outcomes? Win-win, win-lose, or compromise. Sometimes walk away. Now, we all know the famous story, hare and the tortoise. They ran a race. Who won? Tortoise. They ran a second race. Because the hair knew, I'm fast and consistent. The hair won. The tortoise had evidence frame. Hey, I won the last race, so I can try again. Let me strategize and win. So the third race, the tortoise had the final finishing point after a pond, the Adam's Ale. And it was very good at it, crossing it. So the tortoise won again. Fourth race, had said, why get into fight? Why conflicts? Let's get into harmony. Let's convert conflict into opportunities, challenges into triumphs. So they both shake hands, become friends, they hug each other, give high five, and say, on the land, I am very good. Tortoise, I'll carry you on my shoulder. And in the water, Adam's ale, you help me. I'll sit behind your back. And it was a perfect win-win negotiation. Both the parties happy and they dance and celebrate. A great moment. I learned an important lesson. Negotiation is not about winning at the cost of someone's heartbreak, someone's loss. So most of the times, or all the times, the outcome should be win-win, not win-lose. Compromise is a place where we say, okay, let's settle for the best outcome. Great. That is the last option. And sometimes we may have to walk away. That is when our values, non-negotiables are getting into conflicts, which is disturbing us, hurting us, or when we feel something is unethical, we feel cheated. That Or we have a plan B. So that is the place we can easily walk away. So how should we negotiate? What are these negotiating styles? Number one, it's competitive. It's a bit aggressive. Getting your way, it may end up in a win-lose. How about Moving to the second style, accommodating. The third, collaborative. And these styles, we all have natural styles. So the first I experienced in my life was when my client came and said, Hi, Sunny. I heard you're doing high ticket coaching, business coaching. Can you please help me? I said, yeah, sure. said, Sunny, but I don't have money, but I want to earn more money, hard money, everything. Can you please help me? I just have five lakhs. My face lit up. I was very happy. 
वन ईयर प्रोजेक्ट डील डन पेनफुल इट्स फाइव लैक्स एंड इफ यू पे विद इन नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन मिनट्स आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड डिस्काउंट दैट वॉज अ परफेक्ट विन विन एंड एकोमोडेटिव नेगोशिएशन these are good places because the both the parties got benefited but there are places where the customer is going to say sani i have just one lakh please help me and i am saying okay great let's start with this deal if you promise to pay in installments a 6 months program 1 lakh into 6 installments the customer agreed okay i promise to pay i'm fine two months pass second installment she pays 50000 now i'm little disappointed here comes compromise when the client says i'm going to discontinue can i just pay 2 lakhs now here i am also not happy my partner is not happy i'm not my wife but business partner so she says okay let's compromise that is the best thing to do because we are not going to here get into conflict it's all about business reputation win win so we did just that so the whole thing is are we driven or desperate if we are driven for a mission for a common goal to help our clients win i'm sure you will keep your cool and convert conflicts into challenges you will convert up challenges into opportunities and finally you emerge as winners so identify your style and emerge as winners over to you to master of Let's give a round of applause to Toastmaster Sunny. Sure, for negotiation style, it should be win-win. Now we will move on direct to our second speaker. Our second speaker today is Toastmaster Juliet. Toastmaster Juliet. she is from india and has been in qatar since 2017 she had joined club to stand on october 2021 she believed that in the motto developed a passion for running if you do you will never case to grow Her speech will be evaluated by Toastmaster Priyam Sharma. Toastmaster Priyam, could you please read the objective of this speech? Thank you, Ben. <laughs> you pronounced my name so lovely way. I mean, first time I am hearing somebody pronouncing my name in such a way. Thank you. You made me a you know laugh. a good day so the speaker juliet will be uh, attempting level 2 introduction to toastmasters mentoring path is motivational strategies where the title of the speech is empowering growth where she will be sharing her journey as a mentee in toastmasters so all the best juliet and over to you toastmaster of the day Thank you so much Toastmaster Priyam Toastmaster Juliet Toastmaster Juliet the screen is serious I don't have uh, your introduction your speech title sorry over to you Mentoring is not about making people like you but about helping them become the best versions of themselves said david stock stoddard toastmaster of the day fellow toastmasters and guests 
I've come today to share my experience as mentee in Toastmasters journey. I attended one of the demo meetings, which was the first demo meeting ever of Club Toasted. And it was the first ever online meeting which I attended in Toastmasters journey. This immediately synced with positive and supportive and the vibe of the club. And that's when I decided to become a charter member of Club Toasted. From then on till now, there is no looking back. I've marched forward graciously and I'm very happy for what I am today. My first mentor was DTM Deepthi, our charter president of Club Toasted. She is well experienced and knowledgeable in various arenas, but particularly in Toastmasters. I spent hours and hours of learning about various rules and roles in meetings. She is a great taskmaster and a wonderful motivator. She'll be able to push you or drive you and will be there at the back until she sees you to accomplish things. She also shared her own personal experiences, which was helpful for me to manage everything with ease. I'm gratefully, gratefully thankful for her mentorship or for which if she was not there, I wouldn't have been to the place where I am now today. My second member was DTM, mentor was DTM Christopher Almeida. I'm so glad that he's here today. He was the first person to mentor me for evaluation. And you know when? That was a time when they said, you have to participate in a contest. Few minutes before the meeting of the contest, I rang up to my mentor asking, Christopher, I have to attend the contest. What do I do? And he said, relax, Juliet, you can ace it easily. And he said, there are three mantras or three successful areas of how you can do the evaluation. And I went ahead and attended the first ever evaluation in an evaluation contest. And you know what? I won. And that gave me so much of confidence. And we went up to attend the area contest. And believe me, I will never forget that area contest in my life. It was that contest where Club Toasted almost made a clean sweep in the entire contest. And we won in every possible areas. I thank D. Tim Christopher for his mentorship. With your mentorship, I was able to get through the area and division level this time. And I will not kiss it back. You will see me in the district level the coming years. I also want to thank DJ Marcus Udogang. He was one of my mentors who helped me to give some successful strategies on storytelling techniques. I was not very comfortable in telling stories. I did not know where to pause, where to, where to give importance, but his successful strategies helped me to gain a lot of passion towards storytelling. And that has become the second interest in my life at Toastmasters. I can never forget his wonderful sessions, which are vivid in my memories. When I think of a passionate Toastmaster, DT Rinku Saha comes to my mind immediately. I was awestruck by her passion and commitment towards Toastmasters and a desire to help individual out of the box. You will be able to think about her and she will be there to support you. And I can never forget my DTAC when I saw her winning so many laurels. You know what? She had even appointed one of her nanny to come back to carry her bags of laurels, accolades, the trophies and everything, which made me wonder, my goodness, what a great personality this person is, but still, She's very humble at heart. <clears throat> there are times when we want to give up 
giving speeches because you're so overwhelmed with work. I remember how DTM Pooja Saran pulled me back on the track by extending her counseling sessions and made me come back and give, give all the speeches and be on the track of my path to all of my fellow Toastmasters and guests. I have had great experiences as a mentee. I learned to take up roles as a grammarian, speaker, evaluator, Toastmaster of the day, and also able to be successful being in evaluation contests. I was the first VP membership member, membership uh, in the XCOM. And also I took the role of the Sergeant at Arms. And you know, it is a great experience when you become one of the part of the XCOM. With the guidance of my mentors, DTM Deepthi, DT Marcus and Pooja, I was able to successfully complete the High Performance Leadership Project where I was able to interview 11 different evaluators from across different countries. And that is still available in YouTube if you would like to go and visit it. And this was really helpful to drive my passion out. And if you want to grow as a mentee, you need to be prepared to receive the feedback and don't start with it. Try to implement in your life and take that initiative. I'm sure that you all will receive the unconditional support I did receive in Club Toasted as we are a global family of passionate and agile. To all the guests out here, please join Club Toasted. We have the Adam's aim to quench your thirst for knowledge. Thank you. Over to the Toastmasters of the day. To us, Toastmaster Juliet. For sure, as our Toastmaster Juliet say, if we want to grow as a mentee, we have to be open for feedbacks. With that, we have someone who will, will do that for us. That is general evaluator. And since I have introduced her, him before, we will allow him to, to dive into our, to his session. Toastmaster Christopher, DTM Christopher. Uh, I'm sorry, Benson. I'm the general evaluator. And uh, I have been also introduced before. So since we are ahead of uh, behind of time, so let us move ahead. And okay. I take myself as introduced and let us move ahead. So today I'm your general evaluator. And I know today was an exceptional meeting because it is not our regular format of meeting. We have uh, skipped our table topic session. And uh, since we had elections and installation on the same day, because to, uh, tomorrow there is going to be a court where all these new newly elected officers are going to attend it. Hence, we had to do it everything on one day and that has made us behind schedule. So as a general evaluator of this meeting, Today, I will be evaluating this meeting in three legs. First, I will call the uh, evaluators to evaluate the speakers. And then secondly, I will call the role players to submit their report. And then I will pass my general evaluators remarks. So the first, I will call upon our first evaluator of the first speaker, Sunny Nagpal. He is evaluated by uh, Toastmaster Mamata. Toastmaster Mamata, can you please evaluate Toastmaster Sunny's uh, speech? Yes, thank you, Deepthi, DTM Deepthi. So, Sunny, the topic was very impressive, and uh, we have uh, we come across this topic, and it was very useful. Uh, some of the things uh, like uh, which you mentioned about negotiation is not at the cost of someone else's happiness. So these quotes, what were what you used, was very impressive, and um, even the 
example what you connected with the tortoise example and with the negotiation skills was compelling uh, to enhance uh, your uh, speech try varying uh, your pacing to emphasize the key points overall the storytelling ability made your speech very interesting so you also asked questions in between for the audience to think and give up the three different types of negotiation skills the role play what you made of your friend and shifting from one side to another made us imagine the situations very easily one point of uh, improvement which i observed is pausing at times will also grab the attention of the audience so if you just pause give a just 2 seconds break and then continue that will help enhance your speech overall it was very interesting summarizing actually left us thinking on how we can use this negotiation skills over to you general evaluator thank you toastmaster mamata you have really started picking up evaluation skills congratulations for that and i can imagine it is your one of the uh, beginning evaluation and you have you are improving by leaps and bounds so let us move ahead to our second evaluator uh toastmaster priyam i hope i am pronouncing your name properly so i don't make you laugh over to you toastmaster priyam so uh juliet's title was empowering growth where she was sharing her journey as a maintained toastmaster the speech was wonderful fantastic she had shared her journey uh so what whosoever has handholded her guided her she has shared her journey described everything went wonderfully clarity was there structure was there her tone her pause everything was fantastic amazing the only two points which i would like to say is first screen saver was it could have been removed so that we could have been able to see your gestures properly some some gestures were missing right we were not able to see some hand gestures also you i believe you were sitting and delivering the speech so uh, at times it restricts our body language you know so uh, that's just a suggestion uh, could be you know you could have just stand and deliver the speech of yours everything to me it was wonderful this was about the speech thank you and over to you general evaluator thank you toastmaster priyam i be, uh, believe that you are also one of the newbies and it is very hard to evaluate somebody like juliet so i can imagine the place that you are coming from but i would request you to please maintain the green yellow and or a uh, red light of the evaluator and you try to give as much as uh, it is not only about finding the flaws but it is also about giving the good feedback and it has to be a combination of both and then you need to summarize it at the end of the uh, speech so you can actually consume the allotted time to you next time onwards please take care of this now with this our evaluation segment is over now i will call upon the role player of today's meeting to give the their report so first i would like to call upon our timer uh, timer dtm christopher almeida will you please submit your report general evaluator fellow toastmasters guest warm good evening once again uh, here is my report for today's meeting the meeting started on time uh, we had the meeting segment going on time until the installation officer came on board and where we were behind 15 minutes behind schedule our uh, qo speaker took 24 minutes 41 seconds question and answer took 8 minutes our uh, speaker one took 7 minutes 18 seconds 
speaker to 7 minutes uh, 19 seconds our general evaluator got the meeting segment 22 minutes behind schedule our evaluator one took 2 minutes and 8 seconds evaluator took 1 minute and 30 seconds both the evaluators are qualified both the speakers are qualified and today we are still now we are behind 15 minutes behind schedule over to the general evaluator Thank you, thank you, DT and Christopher, for that elaborated time slip. Now, I would like to call upon our president and our grammarian and our accounter. He is wearing multiple hats today. So, I invite distinguished Toastmaster Pooja Saran to render her report as grammarian and accounter now. Very good evening, General Evaluator and fellow Toastmasters. My report for Counter and Grammarian. I believe we kind of did justice to Adam's Ale because 80% of the people who took the screen said the word, including our KEO speaker who just said the Adam's Ale all over the place. There were a couple of R's, O's and ums uh, that I would just give an add-on to. Sunny, our speaker, said eight times now because seven times Mamta and Priyam said so also four and five times respectively that was the R counter and then it comes to grammarian there were a couple of things that I added on that was best version of themselves a quote quoted by Juliet that is something that I would take it forward over to you this English Toastmasters thank you thank you English Toastmaster Pooja Saran for that crisp report and I must say, Adam was a lucky man. He had got Adam's ale. He had got an apple. He had got an E. So he, he got everything. Adam is a lucky man. So with this, I will move to our next segment, which is general evaluator remarks on the meeting. Now, I must say, meeting started dot on time. Kudos to that. And this is something that we follow in our meeting, that we start meeting on time in spite of people's role players being there or not because we believe show must go on and in time. So meeting started dot on time and it was Sergeant at arms, though uh, she had some technical issues to join in time, it is something very marvelous that we see in Toastmasters that we don't wait. Somebody else will come up and take that role for you. And so that is what Toastmaster Sham Sundar did. He took the role of Sergeant at Arms on 11th hour and he introduced the president very well. President took the call because our Toastmaster of the day had also some technical glitches. He was not able to join and she smartly covered up that time in conducting elections and installation. And she gave the play, uh, space for Toastmaster of the day to join. Me. And then Toastmaster of the uh, ele election and installation, it was conducted uh, as per the procedure and uh, keeping up all the norms, though the installation is done by the uh, area director generally, but we did not have that much time before the court, so we had to do it. And with due permissions, we have done the installation with the help of distinguished Toastmaster Christopher today. After this, Benson, joined in and uh, he introduced the theme of the day very well and i can imagine that there was like due to paucity of time the call that he took on 11th hour that uh, how to wrap up the thing to make the meeting in time kudos to benson taking such calls on the spot and making the meeting chris then i would like to move to the next role players, grammarian and timer and our counter, all the role players were they do, uh, did their uh, job diligently and they submitted the crisp reports and looking at the paucity of time, they also did the justice. Speakers, they were also well in time. KEO speaker, they took little uh, time more, but he is not a Toastmaster, so uh, it's something that, you know, we uh, can al always, you know, give the leeway and then but it was a marvelous session it was an eye-opening session and it motivated me at least to take some actions towards environment 
that was something very nice so kudos to dr ajit for his sh sharing his knowledge both the speakers they were qualified nobody took extra time and uh, both the evaluators they were though they qualified but they were little on the lower side but today that be, uh, became uh, that, you know that is a uh, favorable thing for us that they took little lesser time and now with this the meeting was very well conducted and we are now happy to see our new faces coming in new leadership coming in and i'm sure they will take us to new places overall it was a very good meeting though there were some challenges and at the end of the day we made it that is something if the uh, all is went uh, well that ends well so no i will not like to have share any other feedback than this because it is it was an exceptional meeting with this i give control back to our toastmaster of the day for his concluding remarks back to you toastmaster of the day benson let's give a round of applause to our general evaluator and i'm sure we take those feedbacks to make sure we improve and I wish I could finish this seven philosophy, but since the time is not on our side, I would like to summarize by saying that Babylon have fall and never to rise again, but it, it, its wisdom have been kept for us, which I, would, I, do, I do recommend to everyone who desired much wealth to take advantage of those seven philosophy or to read this book. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. I am not yet rich, but I'm trying to put myself together because I believe that something well prepared is half done. With that, I would like to hand over the control back to our president. Just Master Puja, the screen is yours. Our president now is Sham Sundar. So I hand it over back to Sham Sundar. Over to you, Sham. Thank you, Puja. Thank you. Please give a big round of applause for uh, our uh, dashing uh, uh, TM Odi Benson. He has uh, taken this charge of uh, TMOD's role today in a Jiffy. Thanks to you, uh, Benson. That was uh, really, really wonderful. And thanks for our uh, KEO sessions, Dr. Ajit. It was really good, uh, inspiring, as well as uh, eye-opening also. Well, I have just one minute of, uh, uh, it's not a speech, actually. It's just a, a message which I would like to uh, pass it on to all of us, including me. Whenever a baby is born, or whenever, let me take an example of uh, calf, because calf is in a bigger, or elephant. When it is born, the mother will always be eager to look into only one thing. Can anyone guess what is it? Let me tell you. When is it going to stand? When is it going to step forward? This is the only one step or one desire at that point of point of time. All of us, or as a parent, will be looking looking forward for the baby or an animal, I mean calf or an elephant, baby elephant. So, when that first step. It's been taken. That's it. Automatically, the even as a parents, we feel very happy, and that's the joyous moment what we have. And that's exactly the first step, which was taken by our DTM Dipti Potnis when she was chartering this club. And today, you can see we are all witnessing the club going leaps and bounds everywhere, creating remarkable history among 
district 106. It's the same step what Christopher Almeida had taken in 2021 December with a vision. And of course, it's the same step which was passed on for Marcus and DTM Puja, which has been witnessed today to the great glory of the club toasted. So ladies and gentlemen, dear fellow Toastmasters and uh, all the guests over here, including Dr. Rajit, it is that step which decides your final vision or final goal. It is that step which you take, whether it is good, bad, ugly, which will determine your destiny. So let us take that one step forward or that particular first step today to make this club toasted a much more higher popular in District 116. And let us keep our past, uh, past leaders vision intact towards the future. So are you all with me to take the first step? Thank you. Thank you very much. And with this, I will conclude my speech as well as the meeting number 64 of Club Toasted End. Thank you. And we, I think now we can uh, stop the recording. Stop your hands to close the meeting. <laughs> and get a gavel next time. Open your yeah, first yeah, meeting that. with the gavel. Can we have a feedback from Dr. Ajit our KEO? Meeting is officially adjourned, but we would like to have your feedback, sir. And then our founder and then our mentor, Dr. Ajit, give us some feed forwards. How did you like the meeting and how was your experience? Thank you very much. It was very good. Um, I could not see the color change, so I could not stop. Actually, I had uh, to repeat my few slides to make it to 18 minutes or 16, whatever it was. Maybe because of the share screen strip that uh, wherever that color was, I could not see. Anyway, it was good. Thank you very much for this uh, chance to share the information. And I'll be happy to help any one of you becoming more environment friendly in any video. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, sir. We would love to have you so him again, again and again. And thank you, Deepti, for getting him. Deepti, give us your feed forwards and then we'll quickly go to our mentor, our lucky charm. Uh, I have no word that I, as a general evaluator, I have shared almost everything and it was amazing and it is very great feeling to see the new faces coming in and the water is flowing and you know it's really it gives pleasure because i remember so many clubs chartered in the same year and hardly few of them exist now and we are going leaps and bounds that is something gives us you know that outstanding club status and it, it is very uh, amazing that we can be snobbish about being you know we are tostadians <laughs> that is something i really love about this and uh, yes, uh, it's amazing to see it growing and glowing. Thank you. We and, need to. And Pooja, it was amazing job. It was a. I know it was a Herculean task, but it was amazing. It was not possible without all of you and the team. I think Sham was the backbone, the Buddha, and Christopher sir, the invisible force. So please give us your feed forward before you wind up the meeting today. Oh, well, fantastic, fantastic meeting, you know, really enjoyed here. Pajit was so nice, you know, I learned so much. I, I felt the passion that he was speaking with, uh, you know, it just uh, that I think he had to pin me. I think that is the only thing. But I think the extra time that he took was really, really worth it. A fantastic meeting. I encourage every member here, please bring one guest to the meeting. I think this is a humble request because you could change somebody's life, right? So make sure that you share the benefit. Uh, you need to uh, show the farm members bring guests to the meeting.
meeting and they could experience this wonderful journey so this is a tip that i would offer to all our members and hats off to you puja your leadership has been phenomenal taking the club to the real real next level i'm so proud to be part of this wonderful club you know though it is an online club district winners three of our members from this club i think who else you know say every member should feel this uh, you know feel proud of this achievement and uh, speaking to sham the other day and he could feel that enthusiasm uh, that i had you know and i think uh, kudos to every members this passion should continue you know participation is key if you participate you learn so uh, be part of this fun filled environment over to you puja I think it just brings tears in my eyes, uh, Sham. I think you've already adjourned the meeting, uh, so we. And Pooja, yeah. this year, this year, first year we uh, we were it was a clean sweep in area contest and we could reach the division. This year we have three all the three places, third places in DTAC, won by our members. Next year, all the first we places. will see this clean clean sweep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You wish our command. I mean, <laughs> you mean you see the dreams and we will fulfill it, Diti. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sham. We uh, would you now announce our next meeting date? Uh, the, our next meeting date is on fifteenth of June. But in the meantime, uh, it is uh, very important that okay, next week we do have our court training, uh, which has been organized in person. I think not online. So in person. So it is on seventh uh, 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 of next Friday, basically. It's so hybrid. Please, whoever is it's available. hybrid. It's in person it's and uh, offline also. It's online also, both. Okay. Yeah. So please do attend, and it will be on uh, in the morning at seven o'clock, uh, seven thirty here in uh, Qatar time. So please uh, do attend because that's a mandatory for our club as a first step uh, for all our members the uh, club role uh, members whoever has uh, taken so please do attend it's a, a training program for nearly one hour and uh, which will say how we have to go through how we have to run the clubs and all those things it will be a very uh, very very enlightening program actually and that brings the first dcp point to the club so yes we we are again on that mark get set go <laughs> get set go We need all the seven out of seven role players to be that you know the marks to come for us. I have a two-day workshop. It's on seventh June, seven a.m. to eleven a.m. Qatar time. Yeah. Yeah. So I. Nine thirty a.m. It's okay. We'll arrange your proxies if you're not available. Please let us know. We'll arrange your proxy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. sure. See you guys. Thank you so much. All the best to the team. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pujar. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.